Hey guys, good morning. Uh, happy morning. Uh, you know, let's start uh, the week with uh, a new and awesome friend joining us. Uh, Shilpa is a new friend who's passionate about uh, you know enabling something which will take care of a demand for teachers because there's a lot of shortage of teachers out there. And Shilpa has recently started uh, this particular initiative called Buddha Teachers Academy. So Buddha Teachers Academy enables you know enables with a lot of programs, workshops. short and long term workshops which enable teachers to you know uh, get there because uh, you know we are right now uh, in a industry or you know in a, in a world where there's a huge demand there a lot of uh, you know uh, schools that have come in there a lot of play schools there a lot of uh, private schools international schools that have come in and there a lot of curriculums different curriculums that have come in so a lot of people get confused uh, that if i have to uh, become a teacher i have to do a ba ed and if i'm not doing a b ed i'm not eligible to become a teacher um, i i need to have uh, you know uh, some qualification to become a teacher how do i do that i might have done engineering or something else uh, especially you know women who are out there uh, might have this particular question saying that i don't have a background but can i do some programs where i can go ahead and you know become a teacher and help um, the school or work in a school which is close by to the home you know so so that you know they are able to take care of their passion of teaching and also uh, ensure that they are living their passion so how you know this mix of this is what shilpa is working on uh, yeah she is a new friend for most of you guys watching but i know her for couple of uh, years now so uh, yeah for the new friends out there so when how did this passion start for you uh how is it going uh, how did this initiative come and why are you so close to education why did you take up education and you know <laughs> taking care of enabling teachers uh, and building this international community over to you shilpa yeah hello everyone um this is shilpa here um i am the managing director of buddha teachers academy uh, an organization i personally built in order to overcome the barrier that we have all across the world i i might sound exaggerated here but the shortages is all across the world even in the developed countries like united states canada england um what usually happens is there is a lot of misconception or miscommunication in terms of what a person needs in order to become a teacher to i mean because of the lack of information because of not knowing what to do many people do not get into the industry also uh, there is a very uh, misconceived notion that you know you uh, have a very limited uh, opportunity to expand yourself i might say um, what i mean here is if you if you see yourself as a software engineer a usual common career these days you you assume yourself traveling the world um having meetings with people across the world uh, one might not assume these things as a teacher but let me tell you that is not the case um because as a teacher you have the freedom of building your classrooms yourself um i doubt if you want to create a classroom which is highly interactive which you want to uh, expand in terms of how you communicate and given the technology that we have no principal would come up and say why are you doing this why are you not doing it another way you know so apart from all this the impact that you have you know you 20 years down the line your boss your your colleague you know your someone working under you as a software engineer might not remember you but i'm pretty sure if you do a decent job as a teacher 20 years down the line <laughs> almost all the students in your classroom would remember you sure. i think um that uh the the idea that there is so much uh, lack of trained teachers even as in our country within our country and and the gap or the understanding that we have in terms of education within india uh, how we are degrading it how we don't understand how impactful or how well established it is is something that has geared me towards education but personally um when i think of myself my greed is leaving a legacy behind some people like you know some people like to work for money some people like to work just to get by the day by the month and having enough time for their family my greed is leaving a legacy behind you know 
when i'm towards my final days i want to be geared by people who have this notion that oh this person has left a high impact on me and i think education is one of the rarest departments or one of the careers that has an option to leave an impact in 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 a doctor's life in a lawyer's life in an artist life in a musician's life it's not just about what careers they choose it's about you know how they how they deal or how they present themselves how they uh, become a part of the society how how a child becomes you know uh, a responsible citizen i might say um so if if you want to see a change in today's world i think i think education is is one of the routes where you can make a make or bring a change across all industries so um I, I think that's the most important reason I chose education. So, why did you choose uh, Buddha as uh, the name? As the name, name. Um, if you think of Buddha, you know, it's it's not it's not religious for me. It's, I, I'm I am personally religious, but I'm not a Buddhist or I'm I'm not into Buddhism. Um, but if if you think of the name Buddha, the thought of teachings comes comes into your mind and the simplicity, um, the chaos. I might say, um, you know, I might sound in in I might sound negative saying this, but you know. the the world that we live in today is so chaotic and you know so so negative you know we are, we are so geared towards degrading everything that's around us um we have stopped appreciating or or you know gotten ourselves to not appreciate what's around us but buddhism is is this term that makes everything so simple you know um like everything around you is beautiful you don't have to complicate everything um you just have to learn uh, buddhist teachings you know these are few things that come into your mind meditation calming yourself developing yourself from within you don't need materialistic things so i think these are some of the things which form an important part of education in developing them a child in developing a child into a wholesome um uh, a person who would become a part of the society and help uplift it or develop it or per se just you know become a full part just living their own lives not creating a mess i think that should be more than enough they don't have to become you know abdul kalam or narendra modi or anyone they just as long as they are not creating a chaos and having their own life i think that that itself is in in itself is is more than enough so the simplicity the aspect of being content developing your own self not being influenced by what's going around i i think that's the idea that brings in the name buddha um, of the organization cool so what was your past career i mean before this um I mean, I've worked probably in most of the departments I've tried. Um, I started my career at 18 years. I worked as a call center agent. I worked for uh, uh, HSBC. I worked for 24 by 7, and as soon as uh, I worked as an undergrad in these organizations, and once I finished that, I moved to the US for my masters. Um, that's been a long-lasting dream. Uh, I've been here since 10 years, more than 10 years now. It's 10 and a half years. um i came for my masters my uh, although i worked in a call center my uh, uh, major in undergrad and masters was was in chemistry um then i worked as a software engineer uh, while doing so um i was also uh, working on my organizations my non profit organizations which are um akshar nilay and rupanivas nilay um Actually, my life. That's how I met you yeah, yeah. and your family. Um, um, the idea behind starting my non-profit organizations was primarily to leave an impact, but also to learn and understand. You know, what's the issue that's going on behind education? Are the teachers willing to learn? As government teachers, I think that was the best part to learn because these. people uh, or the, the teachers in government schools have a stable job but are they willing to go ahead and take that extra risk to learn and i was amazed to see the willingness from these teachers to do the best for their students um, i i didn't expect it you know personally i, I was going in assuming a lot of pushback from the teachers mm-hmm. 
but i might say of all the schools that we worked in i hadn't seen that from any of the in any of the teachers they didn't say why are you wasting our time or we wouldn't allow this everyone was like oh what can we learn what is it you know that we can learn so i i think that was amazing for me um and while working as a software engineer i knew i knew um, i had to go back to education so i i uh quit in between i helped in my uncle's restaurant so after that i was in in a high school um i wanted to understand you know i wanted to understand the gaps between there's so much comparison between indian system and american system so i wanted to understand the gap um what's the difference what's helping what's not helping you know are we uh, not appreciate appreciating our own indian system well enough so these were the questions that i had in my mind so i started applying for a high school teacher and luckily i got placed as a chemistry high school teacher um which placed a very solid foundation on on understanding what what things did we need as a society and what did we have to keep um uh, back so um a high school teacher was my last role and currently i'm taking care of my son my beautiful son who is 14 months old and uh, so how I'm is it how is it uh, you know being a mother and also you know taking care of this particular initiative um i think being an entrepreneur gives you the freedom of choosing your work hours um you have the choice of working when your child is sleeping you have the freedom of working in the nights so i i think that's beautiful for me and this is like the perfect time um if i might add i i think i had these i have these dreams for my son when he grows old i want him to do this do that and one day i was just thinking um okay i have these dreams some day he is going to realize i had my dreams myself if i don't give my best to my own dreams how would i justify it to my son you know he might ask me why should i work so hard when you gave up so easily so i think that that's the point i decided i wanted to not give up on my dreams and wanted to give my best no matter what happens and the rest is how it might go so i might say the motherhood was the biggest reason i didn't give up on my dreams so why education and why do you feel that there is a lot of shortage of you know teachers or i would say skilled teachers um why is there a shortage of teachers the the biggest gap is um there's no one telling people teaching is one of the careers it's not a sort of career that the students have been presented to um we are placing emphasis on kids being artists kids being musicians but i haven't personally seen conversations around students having that option of becoming a teacher um the the depth of gap for the knowledge of the profession itself is is amazing to me um because like i said earlier you know a child cannot see themselves excelling or you know creating a mark for themselves as a teacher um because that's like one of those jobs which has become you know okay if i don't get into anything else let me try teaching i, I think that's the phase we are yeah. in now as a society and that's affecting us a lot a few decades ago if you look at it um i still remember the the respect my grandmother got as a teacher i think that's fading to to a sense because there is so much attrition within the schools um there is no bond between a student and a teacher so it's it's more like a business relationship than a personal relationship more of a transaction that had been earlier um it's become a financial transaction more so to say not to say there are not teachers who don't take care of their students i've met some amazing teachers who who do not uh, you know give up in, even on the last student that they have in their classrooms i've seen so many teachers who have dedicated their personal time and the society i might say is developing only because of these teachers um so if if you see you know there are so many options you can become a principal that's the usual progression as a teacher you can become a principal but 
because there is i i have known people who have traveled to germany who have traveled to singapore who have traveled to united states london you know canada um, these are people kenya these are people who just had normal engineering degrees but later realized wanted a career in education and have traveled all across the world just in terms of their career in teaching um it's not a glorified career i might say which is holding people back um you can get into research um you have one of the best programs offered by so many universities across the world um i think united states has a very strong research program in terms of education although they have their own barriers in terms of implementation mm-hmm. but the structures that they have in place are few of those which every country can follow for their own benefit um so you know the glorification is taken off from the career i think that's the biggest challenge that for the for the current generation um for not choosing teaching as a career um so personally i i want to spread the word uh, within the next year, within the current generation which is graduating and help them understand this is one of the careers that they can mm-hmm. have a meaning, meaningful impact in and they don't have to compromise on their lifestyle um it it might not be in millions but it would be a a very good career option with a very good lifestyle um so spreading that word might help getting better talent into into the uh, in industry and i just before the call i was reading an article in economic times mm-hmm. on mr praveen kumar an ips officer he is the head of the telangana's welfare association um schools um it seems they have 87 schools even them uh, they have uh, been even in this article they were talking about the shortage of co- qualified teachers that that they are facing uh, we had a board call uh, a board members call of buddha teacher a few weeks ago part of um kyle who is one of the members and teaching in hong kong he had the same thing robert who is a part of the american system had the same he is an assistant principal he had the same thing to say everywhere across the world there is a shortage and you know the the very good thing about this current generation is they realize the importance of leaving an impart impact and you know making a difference so i think half of the job is done it's just that we have to do the other half and spread the word so b- between indian uh, education system and the international education system there are a lot of things there are very few international schools with a, which are adopting you know different methodologies something new but it looks like only rich are getting to you know access this particular uh, thing what's your opinion i mean in terms of just education system between india and international is there a difference you know how do you feel that we can bridge that gap um the first thing i i think we are putting a great importance on um, believing that the other systems are better than the indian systems or the western systems are better than our systems um teaching 70 kids over in year um, in the american system uh, the biggest myth buster for me was that grades do not the american system doesn't emphasize enough on the american system, on the, on, on on the grades um no yeah even an american kid places equal importance on the grades the the biggest difference is they have better options you know the the the, the few options that we have back home are limited but the options that the american system offers are pretty advanced and they have the best in terms of sports in terms of music arts humanities i think that's where we are lacking but we are getting more and more towards getting influence assuming that grades do not matter uh, one thing we have to understand is we are not trying to implement newton's law in everything that we do on a daily basis rather by working hard on getting grades what we are doing is we are trying to learn the hard work you know um the amount of effort that goes into making sure you learn something even if you don't like it and eventually excel at it 
imagine that hard work being put into something that you really love um imagine you know you doing something that you love and you putting the equal amount of effort the difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person is not their intelligence it's the amount of hard work um so that has been taught to us from a very long time you know and i know there is a lot of criticism that's going on in in today's um medium um and yes international schools have been adapting to giving more options but are we seeing that you know the students from uh, tier 2 or tier 3 schools aren't excelling no no yeah. you know more i mean actually in fact you know every year if you look at the results of the civil services i hardly doubt one of those students is a student from from one of the international schools you know these these kids are from tier 2 tier 3 schools you know they have been taught to work hard wake up at 5 am and sleep at 9 pm or sleep at 12 pm and 12 am and work so hard so what i'm trying to say is it's the the change that we need is how we import education um, but not stick to the opinion that you know Bill Gates dropped out of you know in Harvard. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg dropped out. They still made it to life. I always tell my kids, you know, my nieces and nephews, first you get into Harvard or Stanford, then we'll think about dropping out. Um, but I think the myth that grades don't matter is the biggest challenge that we face. Um, it's a myth. Um, at this point, we are trying to teach our kids to work hard. not not you know give up even when it gets difficult even because even as let's say you most of their parents wants that want them to be entrepreneurs um as an entrepreneur in the beginning at least for the five years you have to do everything you know you you won't have enough finances to get the work done by everyone you have to do everything so being not able to do something you don't like should not be the reason for you to give up at this point we are teaching our kids do what you love but what about the mundane things that they might have to do later to excel so i think that's the biggest myth or the difference between indian system and the american system um otherwise it's the same thing every child wants to do well um, every child wants to excel um they need the same emotional amount of support that they have uh, but the one other thing that comes to my mind is how at 16 years the kids start working and want to be financially independent i think we are good as an indian system depending on our parents and having that emotional bond i don't think there's anything wrong in being financially dependent our parents took care of us it's our responsibility to take care of our kids i think that brings in a lot of responsibility in the family a lot of stability a lot of emotional connection i know there's a lot of societal pressure uh but barring that if you do that there's a lot of bonding between the child and the parent so i think we are good as a system i think we should not be influenced a lot by the other systems it's just that the mode of teaching and the and the kind of crowd that's coming to teaching should be changed uh but otherwise yes grades matter yeah, but the options should be more can can you talk about the recent workshop which you've done through uh, buddha teachers academy for teachers so what category of teachers were there what what was their feedback what what did they learn differently maybe you can share and what, what was your experience after the entire workshop um so yes uh, we had about 30 teachers coming in from across the city it was a two day workshop organized by us it was just a taster um, as we were offering it to the teachers within the city um we wanted to um uh, understand more so what the teachers wanted um we did have a solid product to offer we had a uh, uh, an opportunity to, to do let the teachers learn various ways that the international community is learning um or or using in their classrooms uh, so that was the idea in bringing in people together it was a very short time to you know master these skills but we at least wanted uh, the teachers to have an opportunity uh, to to learn these skills um at the end of the whole project 
uh, or at the end of the whole workshop the immense amount of support and love that we got from teachers was amazing um, i think the whole community is still together and they have the freedom to reach out to each other uh, with questions and 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 other suggestions that they might have um, one thing i might include is that you know as buddha teachers academy that we are, what we are trying to do is also bring in or create a community wherein you know there's support um, that's missing a lot within the teaching community we're trying to bring in support from the international uh, systems too you know we're create, trying to create a community where everyone supports each other which is very well established in other industries but not somehow when teaching the, the interaction between teachers from different uh um, regions or the different regions in the world is missing so that's something we are working on and i think that that will be a great initiative to work on um but the workshop itself for two week two days was amazing uh, we hope to do that uh, sometime very soon um um the teachers the pre service teachers or in service teachers can always look at our website to get more information um but the other thing that's coming up is uh, we would be offering a 3 month certificate program uh, for the teachers uh, that would start sometime in december first week or november last week um this would be a 3 month program it's it's we think it's a very good amount of time to impart knowledge um uh, we've created a community of faculty and advisors from across the globe uh, so i'm very excited what we are trying to do is help uh, people who want to choose teaching as a profession also the teachers who would like to learn um, you know the advanced or most recent developments in the industry um, so it's a 3 month program you can always look into our website for more information or reach out to me directly if you have any questions um, so yeah super so uh, i really like the way you also conducted you know that as soon as the pandemic started we had teachers who were not uh, really prepared you know to take sessions online they were not knowing how to use zoom and you know how to yeah. engage the students so can you talk about that because that was really i think helpful for many yes so um one of the gaps that we were seeing or one of the things that the teachers really needed help on was using the online tools you know um i might i must add like everyone is adding the teachers overnight had to change their profession from in person communication to a te- te- technology expert um i think that was the biggest challenge that the teachers were facing um we conducted a session on online teaching um the tools that they can use Uh, so what happened was the uh, schools in india started online sessions after a period of time and few countries which had the pandemic a little earlier than us china for instance um had the pandemic a little earlier and started their schools before we did um so this gap helped them overcome the issues or the situations that online online teaching has earlier than us um so we partnered with a few uh, teachers who are working in 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 the system mm-hmm. and we offered a, a free work- workshop for the teachers in 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 the country and uh, I, i think uh, we were able to let the teachers know on how to use it uh, it's available on a youtube channel um, you can always go back if if anyone wants to learn uh, it's it's uh, it was offered by Carl Wagner who's a teacher in Hong Kong you can always refer to the video um so the idea was helping teachers understand what tools they can use in their classrooms how to keep their students engaged uh, so that was how we uh, offered this workshop over about one and a half hour okay got it so uh you know a lot of us as parents we we just i mean the trend is changing earlier you know it was more of imposing and nowadays we are not really dictating things and we are saying like mera bachcha kar lega i mean uh, my kid will you know uh, having faith on the kids and you know letting them do what uh, whatever they want so what you know do you think that this trend is good uh, are we moving in the right direction or you have your perspective on this um i think to a 
point it's it's good you know letting that that uh, thought that the child letting the child know that they are mature enough to make their own decisions is a good thing but there are a few things which the child would know know have will not have any idea about um i if i give if if i may give an extreme example you know if your child is going and putting their finger in fire you would say no right because by experience you know that's extremely dangerous so there are a few things which are extremely da- dangerous you know in terms of what career choices are they making in terms of what relationship choices are they making you know these days the kids want to get into a relationship very early that might be right but it's always good to have suggestions from an adult who's been through that process for a very long time you know i think that relationship where you're trying to be a friend to your mm-hmm. child is very good um but let's also remember that your your child has only two parents you know they they don't have an option of finding a parent somewhere else they can find their friends all across the classroom all across the streets all across the communities but they would not find a parent and i, I think a lot of us are moving or or afraid that our child might question us if we try to you know mm-hmm. give them suggestions so we might use the relationship of that friendship and give them advice instead of saying hey you should this you should do this um i think we should try the idea of you know hey these are the reasons why what you're doing might not be right these are the reasons why i think okay. you should do this but the, at the end it's your choice i think that is that's a better approach than you know letting say you do whatever you want then what's the point of the experience that you went through for about you know by the time they make such decisions you're like 40 45 so you you've had a lifetime of experience for 45 years i think it's good to put that experience to use for the benefit of your own child um in 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 a sophisticated polish to a instead of a dictatorial way i might say yeah so uh, shilpa uh, do you think language makes a, a lot of difference uh, you know especially you know is i mean our teachers really need to be equipped uh, with you know english you know uh, skills you know speaking skills so that they can you know teach well uh, secondly you know i i receive a lot of uh, questions from teachers you know especially government teachers you know they want to do something they want to do something apart from uh, you know their uh, this thing they want to uh, learn something else so yesterday i had this call from one of the uh, government hindi teacher okay can she be trained built so that she can teach english in future you know though she might not be you know uh, a phd or you know a graduate in literature or uh, you know be in literature be in literature so what what are the combinations can you know one teacher you know can a hindi teacher or a, a language teacher can you know she or he can learn uh, math maybe sciences can they also contribute though maybe you know they working in a school for a specific language because of various reasons they've adopted it uh, or they've chosen that in the initial starting career but later they decided that they can also do other subjects so can they also pitch in and you know help in communities where there a lot of uh, demand for either part time teachers or you know tuitions so yeah your, your take on that um if you actually look at the research in terms of language um at a early tender age if a child is instructed within uh, their medium of language back home they find it easier to adapt to what's going on um there is an extra burden put on the child if they are trying to learn something new in a language that's foreign to them um that's not to say english is not important we have to understand that we are a globalized community right now uh, one of the advantages that india has as a society and the reason why we are leaving such a big impact in every industry that we go into is because we are able to communicate or we are able to present our thoughts and opinions in a clear and concise manner which is very important i believe um so english yes is an important language but they should not be a, a person should not be penalized for not knowing the language fluently um for example uh, the french 
always the French, the Germans always learn um, whatever they are learning in their own languages. You know, even if the Prime Minister of uh, uh, France is addressing the world, they would prefer to do so in their own language. So their society is built in a way um, that they have a common medium of understanding or a common language that everyone understands. The other challenge we have as a country um, is also that the multilingual um, society that we have. Everyone has their own language that they speak at home. And given the industrial development that we have, people are moving from one place to another. So let's say somebody is working in Telangana right now, might move to North India. Uh, if they are learning, if the child is learning in Telugu here and moves to Delhi and has to adapt to Hindi or some other northern language, I think that will be a big challenge. And that is one of the reasons why international schools are a chosen medium these days, at least by the people who know they would be moving around. Um, and I, I think English is helping us, but um, research has also said if a child is bilingual or multilingual, um, that helps a lot in their uh, uh, cognitive development. Um, cool. So I, I don't think there is a clear answer to this question, but um, if the child is comfortable at the beginning to learn in their own language, whatever is spoken at home, I think at the initial years, in the initial five years of primary school, I think the first thing the child should be able to get out of a school system is how to communicate clearly and concisely no matter what the language is able to comprehend what the scripture presents the other challenge that we also have we are not a society which has everything written in a single language a lot of research that's been done internationally is written in english so if a child needs to gather knowledge so they should be able to comprehend the material so english is one of the reasons um and write you know they should be able to write what's there in their mind you know that's emails research publications whatever they do they should be able to write and and of course hard work so i think if a school system or a teacher is able to impart these four things irrespective of the language in the primary years primary five years of education i, I think that should be more than enough you know, the language can always be learned later. We have seen so many people who adapt to languages. We have seen people who had no clue what English was for 20 years of their lives, and they suddenly speak fluently, you know. Cricketers are one of the best examples, you know. They come from rural villages, and they speak so fluently, you know, because they are used to working so hard, you know. They wake up so early in the morning to train themselves. They become so, um, so passionate about what they do learn, dedicate themselves. I, I think that's what helps them achieve or, or focus on what they have set their goals as, no matter what it is. I think, you know, again, language is important, English is important, but it can always be learned at a later stage. You don't have to, day one, you don't have to say, learn a foreign language. You know, you've been speaking um, Telugu for four years of your life, now all of a sudden go to school and learn English. I, I think that's, that's a challenge that a child will have to face so wait until they're ready to learn another language so what, what's cooking right now shilpa so what what are you up to what, what are the programs that buddha teachers academy has um, got for people who are teachers or who are aspiring to be teachers uh, two very important things uh, the program that i discussed about the three month certificate program that's coming up in november um, that's the most important thing that I'm working on right now. The second thing is um, I'm trying to create a community of very regulated or very um, moderated kind of a community for teachers all across the world. Uh, I'm taking tiny baby steps um, uh, to create this community. Um, but I would request the listeners or the watchers to stay tuned uh, to the to the program. Uh, especially the pre-service teachers, the, the uh, students who might be watching this or people who would want to choose teaching as a career um, to go ahead and, and look at the uh, certificate program, reach out to me or any of my team members and buy our website and we'd be more than happy to give more information. Cool. 
Thanks a lot, Shilpa. I'm an awesome initiative. I'm sure uh, you know this clears a lot of doubts, ambiguity among the teachers and people. There are a lot of women out there. There are a lot of men out there uh, who are looking for a career shift. There are a lot of people out there who feel IT jobs are stressful. They want to look for something, uh, an alternative which is more peaceful. Uh, people who are not really looking at big, big uh, you know figures or big zeros. Uh, you know in their this thing uh, big digits in their salary package right uh, so i think t- teaching you know personally if you ask me is uh, very peaceful very organized stress free yeah number of hours uh, do matter but at least it is well organized you know what's coming tomorrow um, you know how your year is going to be uh, you know your vac- when your vacations would be so it's pretty planned and you know less chaotic less uh, stressful so i'm sure a lot of uh, friends out there who want to opt for this and yeah i think you know the salaries and all that are pretty decent based on which school you're joining the number of hours you're spending and the opportunities out there for part time is also pretty good so thanks for bringing this particular program and nice nice connecting with you uh, connecting you to the friends out there uh, because i know you well so <laughs> all the best with whatever you do any any uh, any thank you notes for people friends who are uh, watching uh, any suggestions before we close the show of course of course um, um thank you so much for making time for me uh, thank you for giving me opportunity uh, to present myself my thoughts you know it always helps me to clear my thoughts it's a tool uh, when i'm presenting myself um um you. again you know if if you if the listeners or the watch, watchers um have somebody who might who might who they might think uh, um, would be a good fit uh, to teaching please spread the word uh, buddha teachers academy um this organization has been established with the pure intention of making a change in the society through the right ways um so um, i hope uh, i was being i was clear and honest in presenting my thoughts and um and and i can take this further as as i wish to yeah cool so friends uh, who are watching it will share the links of buddha teachers academy you know both uh, the facebook and we'll also have uh, the website listed out there so do follow uh, rise and shine is all about uh, encouraging women entrepreneurs um, so you know do uh, encourage shilpa not only that uh, not only people who are uh on this particular platform i think if you have if you see women around who whom you see uh, there is a potential and you know they they're just you know limiting themselves to uh, being a housewife they have their passion but they are not able to take that step please encourage them i, I think that's very important check what their passion is are they you know killing that particular passion because of family obligations because there's no support there is no encouragement check that out have that discussion and encourage i think you know this series is to fulfill that particular gap so thanks a lot shilpa again all the best with thank whatever you so you're much, doing sir. and uh, thank you friends for joining the show have a great day it's ahead. been a pleasure thank you thank you